And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. It's time, buddy! It's time! It is time! Yes, buddy, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to casually saunter our way into discussing our uh, all new extra strength and now with even more raisins movie of the week and this week we watch hands down the cutest apocalyptic doomsday film ever with a look at the 2021 indie comedy how it ends yes and one of the reasons why i wanted to do this film is that i think it it's a shame that more people haven't seen this movie Oh, God, you know, like, like even Googling it, like, okay, I'm happy with the choice I made for this screen, the Just the Movie screen, because I do like to do something a little bit different, but, like, there were barely any pictures. Yep. Yep. There was one Absolutely. poster and, like, maybe two or three pictures tops Yeah. from the movie, so, like, pickings were slim. Yeah. It, this podcast is about to get very Christmassy. Uh, I I I have five Christmas movies for us next month. Okay, we're gonna be going balls deep into Christmas Town, and I just wanted a fun film before we dive t- first into the holidays. You know, yeah. And I was trying to think of just something that was fun, and this is the first thing that came to mind because this is just a fun film. It's weird to think of a apocalyptic doomsday film that's also like a feel good comedy. Those are two things that don't normally go together. But this film came out this year, hardly anyone saw it, and that's a shame. You know, it's fun, and we need, like, we were talking in uh, Act One when we were discussing uh, The Last Duel that now is not the time for dull, dreary, heartbreaking dramas. We've all literally been through a fucking blender of 2020 and 2021, and now we just need some fun, and this film is just fun. And I know that you've been saying to yourself over and over again, when will Bradley Whitford, Helen Hunt, and Pauly Shore finally do a collab? Yes. And this is that collab that we have just all been waiting for. One of the reasons why I really love this film is because once lockdown happened uh, in in 2020, and we were literally all locked down, Natasha was the first one to say, like, okay, yes, we are all stuck in the house, and we can't go places. We can still go for walks, though, and this will be good for us because we'll stay healthy and we'll stay active. And so we would go on family walks. And it's not like we just walked around the block. We would just go walking around the neighborhood, around the town, and explore. And, oh, hey, we made it to the main street. Let's just keep walking. And we'd go across the street, and we'd go to a park we've never seen before, and we'd see houses that we didn't know were there, and we'd wander into the woods. And it was so weird every time we went for a walk because there were no cars on the street. There were no other people on the street. There, were, there was no one hanging out on their porch, you know, working on a car. It was like we were walking through a ghost town. And so the weird thing about this film is that it, it feels like a memory. Yeah. And I, and I think it was during summer of 2020 when I finally realized, oh, shit, the movies that are going to come out during lockdown, during 2020, all of these indie directors is like, hey, I've got an idea for a movie we can do during lockdown. And it'll be all of these characters and it'll be like a tense drama. And these two people are fighting, but they're fighting six feet away from each other because of social distancing, and it's like, oh, okay. I know when this was filmed, and it sucks. But this is a film that was filmed during lockdown, during quarantine, during 2020, but they just found a way to make it fucking work. Yeah. 
you know? And like, yeah, these people are socially distanced and it's in the middle of fucking quarantine, but they just found a way to make it work so that it's not like a gimmick. This isn't a gimmicky film. They found like the perfect little plot for for making a film in like May of 2020. Yeah. Where it doesn't seem like it's forced and it's simple, but it's got a bit of thought to it. And, you know, it, this film feels like a memory to me. It feels, it, it feels like a comfort film to me. Like, this is my new comfort film. This film feels... This, watching this movie, I feel the way that other people explain their weighted blanket. Yeah. That's how this film feels to me. This didn't make it in a lot of theaters... It, 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 it premiered at Sundance, and then it showed up in a few theaters. But this film, it, maybe like three or four theaters, it made maybe like $100,000 at the box office, and that was it. And then it was rushed as like a digital download. And, and I thought that more people would be interested in this because the cast is in fucking sane. <laughs> But, like, no one saw this, and that sucks, because this is just such a fun, funny, comforting movie that sometimes feels like it's just the series of... Oh, do you have to work, Amber? Yeah. Sorry. All right. All right. I love you. Sometimes it just feels like a series of skits, or maybe they're just ad-libbing. Yeah. And they're just going from scene to scene, and random people pop up. I want to see Colin Hanks in more things. Yeah. I love Colin Hanks. I especially love Colin Hanks because he seems so straight-laced and serious and a good actor and an overall great guy, just like his dad. But I also know that he has a brother, and that's white boy summer Chet Hanks, who is a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. That's what, that, that's what was having me. I, I did not know there was another Hanks. Yeah, Colin Hanks, he's amazing. He looks just like a, you know, he, he looks like, yeah, you are definitely Tom Hanks' son. And it's yeah. like, but wait, your brother's with Chet Hanks. How the fuck did that happen? Because that guy's a piece of shit. This, anyway. this movie was very cute. This movie was very sweet. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I liked following her on her journey. Which is really what this movie was, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I honestly did not notice the social distancing, and and find it interesting that you pointed it out. Uh, yeah, like like uh, there, there's that one argument about like, do you think trash is gonna come tomorrow? Oh, yeah. you think that 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 NASA is a real thing? And that whole argument, and it's like, oh, yeah, here's this person over here. Here's this other person way over here. Yeah. And here's the two people way back over here. And it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, no, this, this is a lockdown, quarantine, socially distanced movie, but they found a way to make it work where, like, you don't notice it. Yeah. That's why this is a post-apocalyptic film, because no one's driving, no one's on the street, no one's walking around. This is the perfect time to make a post-apocalyptic movie, is during fucking quarantine. no. Uh, I, I, let's circle back to uh, Colin Hanks because uh, my wife Natasha is here, and and if, if they have something to say. Yes. Oh, I was just gonna say to see Chet Hanks being murdered. You don't see Colin Hanks being murdered, and he screams when he's he so was in Dexter, funny. wasn't he? Uh, yes. Colin Hanks was a murderer in Dexter. I forgot the, about that. Oh, was he? Season. Yes, he was. He the was big the big bad. bad in one of the seasons of and Dexter. Like, he Before he became a lumberjack. Well. I I was like, holy shit, that's Tom Hanks' son. And then when I found out that he was a killer, I was like, ah! Good on you! Yeah, he should be in more shit. Like, he's great. Yeah, he's amazing. Chet, you fuck off, but... Colin what, Hanks, you didn't have a good white boy summer? I didn't have a good white boy summer. <sighs> I had a great white boy summer. Well... White boy summer That's became white girl summer I'm, for me. I'm white and I'm still hated. <laughs> Woo! 
I, did that feel I, good? It did. Yeah, I imagine it did. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, there's, a, there's a part of me that when it comes what? to No Nut November, okay, I, I, I feel like they have turned a negative into a kind of positive. Because, like, you weren't getting late in November anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> Just like you weren't getting late in October, and you're not going to get late in December. So you take this one month to celebrate your non-getting lateness and turn it into some kind of virtue. People are good always talking try. about... You know, good people are always People are always talking about no, not November, but it's like, I'm sorry, I'm not giving up. My pecans. Yes. I don't care what month it is, I'm still eating my pecans. <coughs> I'm trying to regulate my sugar now that I'm older. And my doctor said, uh, your sugar count is a little bit high. And it's like, okay, well, to be fair, uh, during 2020, I assumed we were all going to die and ate gummy bears like it was water. Yeah. I lived on gummy bears and red vines through the entirety of 2020. And also, before 2020 happened, I was going to the movies all the time and sneaking in as many uh, candies as I possibly could. You have no idea how many candies I can sneak into a movie. I can sneak a lot. So now I'm trying to be healthier, and it's like, so I'm sneaking in pecans to the movie. And not gummy bears and red vines. It's very difficult for me. I'm not saying I'm a hero. Yeah. But uh, that's what I hear people say. Hey, can can, hey, can I, I, I? I've heard people say, yeah. In, every time I hear about Pontius Pilate talking to Jesus, yeah, I, I think of Robert De Niro, because Jesus does a De Niro at one part of the Bible. Uh it, I was just talking about this to Natasha. It was the first time I ever verbalized it to anyone. But yeah. I have always yeah. felt this. And Pontius Pilate goes, so you think you're the son of God? And Jesus goes, that's what you say. You say that. You, you know, I'm not saying that. You're saying that. You're saying that about me. I've heard people say that. People are saying things. And one of the things that people are saying is that I'm the son of God. I'm not saying that. You're saying that. That's what you say that I am. I'm not saying it. Yeah. So you admit it. I don't admit it. I don't not admit it. I'm just saying a lot of people out there are saying that I'm the son of God. I'm not saying that I'm the son of God. I'm not saying I'm not the son of God. But here you are talking about me being the son of God. So I must be the son of something, right? I'm not saying I am, but you're saying I am. That's what I'm saying. Like Jesus <laughs> does a De Niro at one part of the Bible, and and I I just think it's weird. Yeah. You know, like, what the fuck are you doing, Jesus? Just say yes or no. Ah, that's what I hear people saying. <laughs> I was saying it, Bunny. Why don't you hit us with the plot of this week's film, How It Ends? Which again. Uh, so. I, I, God, I like know nobody's name in this movie. Liza. Liza, thank you. She is going to uh, the big end of the world party that a friend is throwing. Uh, and Whitney she Cummings. has a younger version of herself that follows her everywhere. Uh, yeah. I forget why she's walking. I think something happened with the car. Uh, uh, Glenn Howerton from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia stole her car. Oh, was that him, the guy who was chasing him the whole time? Yes. And Bobby Lee from Mad TV saw it all happen but didn't do anything because nothing matters because it's the end of the world. See, I knew I forgot to bring something up. I forgot to bring up fucking Halloween Kills. But anyway. <laughs> But anyway, uh, so as she's going, she's running into various people, and she doesn't really want to go to the party to begin with. Um, she was just going to 
get some pot, get really high, eat a lot, and die. Which, yeah. frankly, I think that's a good plan. Hey, good on you, mate. I'm not looking for an end-of-the-world party, personally. You know, but she was going toward the end of the, to the, to the party, and she, and, and uh, she runs into various people. And we have various discussions with various people on various topics. All of which are humorous. Yeah. And that's the best I got. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's a good uh, summary of the film. I was very happy to see uh, how much Helen Hunt has fallen to shit. Uh, that is always something that I really, really enjoy seeing in celebrities. Uh, the last the time I saw time, her in anything, she was topless and having sex the whole movie. What's that? The last time I saw Helen Hunt, she she was having sex the entire film. She was like nude for most of the film. Really? I yeah, don't think it I've was, actually seen her since Twister. No, she was in this movie and she played a sex therapist. And she started working with a client who was um, paralyzed from the waist down. <coughs> and she was his sex therapist. And she was nude through most of it. And it's like, wow, Helen Hunt, good on you. You've, you're, you've kept it tight, <laughs> as they say. But... Yeah. She was good in that movie, and that was only a couple of years ago, but yeah. I think. I, but, but at the same time, as much as I watch, I, I, I enjoy seeing celebrities fall apart, mm -hmm. I do also kind of admire them for, for their, fuck it, I'm just going to fall apart like a natural goddamn human being. Yeah. Instead of pumping your face full of Botox and shit like Tom fucking Cruise. Oh, yeah. Cher. Madonna. And Cher. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. nobody is naturally beautiful at fucking 70 or 80. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't happen that way. You're getting a lot of extensive work done. <coughs> For those people that are listening to this on SoundCloud, I did not take a hit of marijuana. I took a hit from an inhaler. Mal, you should watch this week's movie, How It Ends. It features uh, uh, your boy, Charlie Day, and his real-life wife, whom he met on the set of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, The Waitress. Yeah. They're both in this. And they're both high as fuck. <laughs> We're just like... We just like giving each other aff affirmations of things that we like about each other. Feet! You have nice feet. There's so many little parts in this film. You know? Uh, it's very subtle. Yeah. Yeah. Nick Kroll, who I think definitely killed his younger self. He's the one who bought all the drugs in the beginning. Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, I had my uh, younger self here earlier. Yeah, we, we, were, we were hiking, and he was on a top of a mountain, and he fell off. Oh. It's like, oh, okay, so he's either lying or he killed his younger self. Either way. Yeah. Uh, Nick Kroll. Fred Armisen as a YS who's really excited to be seen. Yeah. I loved his little part. In this. Why do you think people can see us? I don't know. I, I guess people are just on a different wavelength. But why are you so old? Oh, well, my uh, older self is like 92 or 93. So what, do you, what are your plans for the end of the world? Oh, I'm going to eat this sandwich. Then I'm going to make another sandwich. And then I'm going to eat that sandwich. We younger selves love to shop. Love that. <laughs> uh, Bradley Whitford swimming naked with dolphins. Yes. Love that. Helen Hunt is the mom. I think she does a great job in this. It's obvious that the dad sees the younger self and is like, and who's this? And, and Liza's like, 
see you later, Dad, and they both leave. But it's obvious that Helen Hunt, Helen Hunt knows who both of them are. Yeah. Helen Hunt has no questions of, oh, who are you? It's like, oh, Helen Hunt's the mom. Helen Hunt knows that's, here's Liza, here's Liza's younger self. Uh, uh, Helen Hunt needs no explaining. Well, depending on whether they could see her or not. Because <clears throat> not everybody could see her. I think everybody can see her now. I'm wondering where she... I have questions, because she arrives every day, and then later when they have the discussion at the beach, uh, Liza says, I love how you show up every day. And it's like, wait, do you disappear at night and then come and wake her up in the morning? I, it, it, I have questions, but I like yeah. the fact that there aren't a lot of answers, you know, because it's one of those films... It, even though it's a really simple plot, I feel that this movie can also be like 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 Lamb. You know, you can watch this film and get two different films. Because the way that I saw it is, this film is about a woman trying to make peace with people, and eventually she learns that she needs to make peace with herself. And I felt that that was a pretty deep well, yes, and that was definitely look a part it. of it. And it's a, it's a movie that you're going to have to watch a, another couple of times to really pick up on. Because, again, it was very quiet. It was very subtle. The yeah. humor was very subdued. There was nothing like laugh out loud. But there was, there was more of that, oh, damn, that was funny, you know? Yeah, yeah. More of a reaction to it. And, and it got, and it it got me thinking. It is deeper than it kind of appears on the surface. Yeah. It got me thinking a lot of things. Like, number one, one thing I thought the last time that I watched it was, if it was the last day on Earth, and you killed someone, yeah. is that murder? I, I don't know if it is. I would say it's still murder, but nobody's going to do anything about it. Yeah. So if you're gonna snap, that's your time. You know, another thing that I like about this film is that it reminded me of um, Seeking a Friend for the End of the World, except yes. that one is, is, is funny and depressing. It, it, that one's a funny, depressing, apocalyptic film. This is a funny, upbeat, apocalyptic yes. film. And I feel that, like, they're both two sides of the exact same coin. You know? Yeah. But I'm just I thinking like that, that it sounds to me that... I'm seeing a new business model here, okay? That's that's what's going on. Because some people have fantasy ways in which they want to die, and getting hit by a meteor may not fit that. Yeah. You know, so you can you can have a small business where you will kill people in accordance with their fantasy. That is such a good fucking idea. The world is going to be ending next year, so you set up a business where it's like, maybe you don't want to be killed by a meteor shower. Maybe you always fantasized about getting eaten by lions or tigers. Yeah. Or getting killed in a massive shootout. We can help you. Deaths are us. Uh-huh. And you run a company that's basically a fantasy-assisted suicide company. What a great idea. Yeah, I mean, because really, wouldn't it... Okay, what would you prefer, okay? Being hit by a meteor. Yeah, being hit by a meteor. Or, or being killed fighting off a crack team of ninja. Yeah. Okay, but here's the thing. Legally, we would have to have on a shadow of a doubt that the world was going to end to be able to pass something like that because do you know how many people have fought with states for the right to decide to take their own life medically? Like, 
Dr. Kevorkian was a, a doctor who would assist people with deaths for a reason. They didn't want to die. But that's illegal because it's murder. And what yes, I'm saying murder is... Murder. Okay, okay but Maitland. since you brought okay. up the legal point, I, I have a solution for that. We kill all of those fuckers first. Great idea. Okay, so that's just murder. Nope. <laughs> that's not... Nope. That's not giving people... It's the not. choice of when to end their life. They have that Cat. in multiple states. <laughs> they have it in multiple states where somebody with a terminal illness that, like, there's no cure can choose to get a pill that from the doctor, and they can decide when they want to end their lives. Billy, you have a terminal illness. What That's can the Make-A-Wish Foundation do for you? I want to die in a ninja fight. Yeah. I mean... Or me, John Cena. I mean, either one is saying. easier. That's okay. Like, well, Fine. John Whatever. Cena is actually There's doing a movie, probably so... probably going to be some, ninja fight you to know, the death talk about ramifications on how that would affect the people, the players, if you were, who are going to be playing ninjas and killing you. You know, that's going to take a toll on them. However, if we could get that instituted for the entire world so that you can take your life whenever you want however you want with no ramifications for other people if you choose to do an infight that would be fine that would be fine legally right, right. but well, right now well, the ninjas they yeah. would get their their deaths free you know just imagine a flash mob except instead of a flash mob of dancers at the mall it's a flash mob of 100 ninjas attacking you kill bill style right oh in front my of the safaro music and everything yeah <gasps> beautiful that's how i always wanted to go out only if i prepare physically for it first so i can fight back a little yeah. bit yeah yeah i'm just saying you got to think about the legalities yeah didn't mean to bring it down no, but we'd be that's a, a renegade. Idea, we'd be a renegade organization, just helping people yeah. out. Yeah, that's a great idea. Like now, the A team. Passion laws. Yeah, we're the A team. We're the dead team. Well, I mean, for those states that um, have those compassion laws, where you can choose when to end your life, like, can you legally do something like that? That would be awesome. You're up in fucking Washington. You're dying from cancer, and you decide yeah, you want to go out, like, yeah. James Bond. Hell no! I'm going out Thelma and Louise style, you know and what it's I'm like saying? great. Like, let's hire. I can set that up for you. Yeah, let's hire fifty police cars right now. We can get this done for you. Like that would be an awesome idea. Hell yeah! This is a great fic that Bunny has created. Yeah. The D team instead of the A team. We're the D team. We help you die in the way that you want. Maybe you don't Take want to get. Take control of your own death. Yeah. With the D team. With the D team, you decide how you die. Yeah. Great idea. All right. So I'm already working in marketing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, although me personally, I actually had a dream a couple of years back of us getting hit by a giant meteor, and I found that, fa fa that process kind of fascinating. I'd, I'd be okay with being hit by a meteor because uh, of, of all the edibles I have. All I'm saying is that if the meteor hits, we're going to be vaporized. So I'm good. I'm good with that because I'm not going to feel it. I'm going to be here and then I'm not. Yeah. That's my thing. Like, it's a blink of an eye. Less than that. And I'll be gone. Yeah. Not good. Meteor, I'm okay with. But it's the antis. I'll have an Oculus Rift on my head that will show me everything I'm looking at, except the meteor is now a giant jigglypuff. <gasps> Just coming directly for me. Bunny, how See, would I your kinda, young... I kind of picture it like you'll be looking at the meteor, and it'll be far away, 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 and then it'll come up really fucking quick. Yeah. That is, unless Bruce Willis and his team of drillers get to it first. Yeah. Well, NASA is up That's... there right now trying to push a meteor off course. I don't know if you heard this news. 
This is actually happening right now. Well, yeah. I mean, Russia blew and, up the satellite. And I want to find out which way they're pushing it. That's a good point. You know, because really, let's just finish this. Okay, so this film was written by the husband and wife team of Zoe Lister-Jones and Daryl Wine. And it was directed by both of them, Zoe Lister-Jones and Daryl Wines. And Zoe Lister-Jones, one half of the writing and directing team, also stars in it. So Liza is played by the woman who co-wrote and co-directed the film. Uh, it was filmed during spring and summer of 2020 in the thick of the pandemic and the lockdown, which gave it a great apocalyptic feel. The actress Kaylee Spaney who plays young Liza. She looks like she's maybe 14 or 15. She was 23 years old when she did this. I had kind she, of a feeling, yeah. Yeah. She also starred in the reboot of The Craft, The Craft Legacy, which was also written and directed by Zoe Lister-Jones. So Zoe Lister-Jones, a uh, name to remember, this film just perfectly uses the pandemic in a way that's just great. It, it's quiet, fun, quirky. Variety called it science fiction light. Mm, and, okay. Yeah, like my wife said, the film definitely uses the world in a way that you'll never be able to use it again. Yeah. So, it, yeah, it's the thematic equivalent of a weighted blanket it's my new comfort film and i i love it very much uh colin hanks is a man who's dating an interior designer of strip clubs i like that charlie day and his really and his real life wife are opening their heart shakers which <laughs> i liked Polly shore did a mockumentary called Polly shore is dead yeah. A mockumentary about him faking his own death, and then he gets depressed because everyone is happy that he's dead. Yeah. So I like the fact that that Pauly Shore, it, with all of his troubles in this film, manages to live to the end of the world, and he's super happy about it. And he says, oh, I should have died a bunch of times. And it's like, yeah, I saw that mockumentary, and it was all right. Well, I see, I, I just find Pauly Shore in general should just be kind of an interesting case of a human being and celebrity. Because, like, he didn't do anything wrong. You yeah. know, like... God, especially compared to now, where, you know, people are coming out in favor of killing black people in cold blood. Yeah. You know, and and, like that's okay, and you could be a congressperson. Paulie Shore, like Colleen McCulkin, Colleen McCulkin, these two people, like, never did Colleen anything. McCulkin. And all of a sudden, the world just, like, turned against them. Yeah. They're like eighth grade girls. What? Other people, they're like eighth grade girls. Yeah. It's just like, ah, oh, fuck Paulie Shore. Like, Pauly Shore now shows up in things, and Pauly Shore is the joke. Yes. He shows up as himself. But that's right, and that's it. That's yeah. all he has to do is he just has to be Pauly Shore, and we all fucking laugh at him. That's a hell of a I'm thing hoping, to have to deal with. <laughs> I'm hoping that eventually he'll get his turn, because a lot of people are coming back right now. Yeah. I hope that... Holly Shore comes back. I, I'm really happy with the way I explained Britney Spears in, in one past episode of the podcast. Britney Spears went a little bit crazy, and we all laughed at her. Then a pandemic happened, and we all went fucking crazy, and now it's hashtag free Britney. <laughs> so I'm always so, you know, we all came back, and we, we were all in general like, oh yeah, she was treated like shit. I might have I... been part of that. Hey, free Britney. So I'm hoping, you know, a lot of people are getting a chance to come back. And hopefully... I, I give kid actors Britney Spears, My, Miley Cyrus, like, I give them a pretty good, a pretty big pass for a lot of things. Because it's like... Yeah. It, 
I never fucked up on camera. Yeah. You know? Like, all the stupid shit that I did, nobody was following me around filming all of it. Right. You know? And that's, and that's what... So it's like, all right, you fucked up. You did something stupid. Get on with your life. <coughs> Bunny, I have a question. For yes. You. Uh, how would your younger self see you? Now. That's what that's what I started thinking with this movie, and it actually cheered me up because it uh, oftentimes now. In 2021, I think, oh, man, I'm going nowhere. I'm doing nothing. Yeah. I suck. I'm the worst. I have nothing going on. But then I think of, like, I don't know, like, 12-year-old me just suddenly showing up. A YS, a younger self, like, in this week's movie, how it ends. And my younger self looking at me and saying, wait, you're married. You have kids that don't entirely suck. You have a pretty awesome wife. You're going out as a woman and you're comfortable with this. You have a podcast. You have a YouTube channel, two YouTube channels. I think my younger self would be a, a, a pretty happy looking at my life that present me sometimes gets depressed about. And that makes me feel better. Yeah. about my present situation when I think of childhood me being pretty stoked about everything. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, Sometimes I, I just I get... have no idea what a childish me would see me as. When I was, when I was younger, I imagined, like, like, I don't know what I'm going to be when I'm older. I don't know what I'm going to do. But I want a wife and a family and a house and, a, and, and just, you know, I wanted to be happy when I grew up is all I wanted. And sometimes I get really depressed, uh, you know, as a middle-aged man living in the middle of nowhere, as a middle-aged woman in the middle of nowhere. But I think that if younger me saw me, then he'd be like, shit, okay, you read books to kids. You are comfortable dressing as a woman and going out and living your life and being your best self and you have a wife who's awesome and kids that mostly listen to you. Fucking good for you, older me. And that makes present me feel better. Cool. And that's one positive that I can take away from this movie, How It Ends, which is probably why it's such a comfort film for me. I love this film and more people should watch it. Yes, I, I, I do agree. It needs to be seen more. It's definitely, definitely well worth the time. Yeah. Love this week's movie. Anyway, that's all I've got for this week's film. How it ends. Uh, Bunny! Yes. It's the Christmas season. And, uh... Uh... Of course, uh, you know, the, the last movie of the year is always Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. Uh, we've got four weeks in December, and I have five films that we're going to be watching in the four weeks of December. I wanted to start somewhere different, and I found something that I'm really excited about, and okay. we're going to be watching that next week. I haven't uploaded it yet to our shared, <coughs> but I will right after this. It's a film from 2008. It's done by the band... Uh, I, I don't want to spoil it. The Flaming But Lips? it's called Christmas on... It, yes. It's called Christmas on Mars. Have you seen this? I've, I've heard of this movie. I, I... We need to get ready for pain, is what I've heard. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm excited to watch this. That. Steve from Blue's Clues is in this. Is it? Is he? Yeah. 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 He's a musician, and he's really good. He does the theme song. He, he had a song, and I've been listening to it for like a decade. I found his CD, like at a, at a, I think a Zia Records. And I fell in love with the CD, and there was one song in particular that I really liked called Mighty Little Man. And then I got really upset when I 
I, I got really happy slash upset when I learned that it was chosen to be the theme song to the TV show Young Sheldon. Yeah. <laughs> on, on one hand, fuck, this song I like is the theme song to the prequel to The Big Bang Theory. I already want to vomit. On the other hand, Steve from Blue's Clues has a TV theme song. Fucking good for you, Steve from Blue's Clues. <laughs> You're getting sitcom money. Yeah. Good for you. Anyway, that's what we're doing next week, Christmas on Mars, and then the week after that, get ready for a double feature. You are going to be psyched for this. Okay. But next week, we're doing the Flaming Lips Christmas movie, Christmas on Mars. I've never seen it, and I barely looked up any information, but uh, that's what we're doing next week, and I'm excited about that. Entering the Christmas season. Okay, let me put it like this. Basically, this is what I've heard. Deep hurting. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. That's next week. You know Christmas on March. And FYI, for anyone who's listening to this, it's free to download on archive.org. If you want to download it, it's there. It's just yeah. there. It might also it might also be uh, on YouTube. I think for free. I don't know, but but archive.org. It's free to download. As well as every film in the original Godzilla, the Showa era. Every yeah. Godzilla movie is on there. Every Universal monster movie is there if you look hard enough. If you have the time. It's a lot of free stuff on archive.org is what I'm saying. So yeah, Christmas on Mars, 2008, next week. Uh, Going to be exciting. But now that I'm looking back at this week, the highs, the lows, the ups, the downs, the YSs, the Bradley Whitfords, the House of Gucci's. Uh, I gotta say, I think this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. I think it's been a damn good episode. Okay, good. I felt the same way, but I didn't want to step on your toes because I feel like you're the person who makes that distinction and not me. But anyway, uh, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I... And Bunny Williams. Wow, nice dramatic pause. And I am Reverend Steve, and on behalf of Natasha and Mal and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you just want to put your head. Do you, do you want to put one in, in in place of the kids? Not really. Oh. And you? Yeah. Just a quick shout out to Orson Carson. We are ending the show, so go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Bye. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Do 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 do. Cut and print. Cut. Cut. And Thank you, honey. That's a wrap. <laughs>